Erosion and Principles of Erosion Prevention in a Forestry Context The intent of this video is to provide a training aid for those working in forestry and natural resources in general. Funding for its development was provided through the BC Timber Sales Membership Agreement. The training aid is intended for equipment operators, construction contractors, field supervisors, environmental monitors, and planners. It will be stated throughout as a take home message that it starts with erosion prevention as the primary goal before considering sediment containment. Water management, whether it's a road surface, a ditch line, or a fill slope, water management is at the root of erosion control. It is the force of flowing water which erodes soil. Best management practices have been developed for forestry operations, one of which will be presented at the end of this video. Section 1 Erosion Preventing erosion is key to protecting attributes of forest operations such as roads and to reduce the amount of sediment reaching aquatic environments. It's important to know what causes erosion and the types of erosion, knowing the erodibility of different soil types and textures, and planning to reduce erosion during operations. Types of erosion Erosion is caused by rain, moving water, wind or gravity, displacing soil, loose rock or dissolved portion of rock. Five common types of water caused erosion are identified in this figure. Rain splash or raindrop erosion. Soil particles are dislodged and moved by the force of raindrops. The amount of erosion depends on the duration and intensity of the rain, the transfer of the raindrops kinetic energy to the soil and the structure of the soil itself. As soil particles become dislodged, they are vulnerable to movement in a process called sheet erosion. Sheet erosion. The overland and uniform flow of water transports soil particles that have been dislodged by raindrops or by saturated surface flow. Rill erosion. Runoff from sheet erosion merges into a single flow path and starts to cut into the soil to form a rill. Rills are typically orientated straight up and down the slope. If left unchecked, rills will become wider and deeper. Gully erosion. Gullies form where rills merge together or where a single flow path has grown into a gully. Action should be taken once rills are formed because gullies can be challenging to repair. Stream channel erosion. This occurs along the stream bed during bed load movement and along the stream banks due to undercutting and redirected flows. The energy and impact of raindrops is highly underestimated. Soil texture, coarse fragment and fine earth. Identifying the soil texture at your worksite and knowing its erodibility risks will allow you to prepare an appropriate erosion control plan. Table one gives practical examples of soil particle sizes for coarse fragments and fine earth. Typically, very few erosion control issues occur with boulders and cobble sized material. The fine earth particles pose an erosion hazard and require attention. Table 2 expands the fine earth component and shows the increased risk of erosion by soil texture. The two smallest grain particles in the fine earth category, silts and clays, require a field test to distinguish between them. Erosion and sediment control plan. The complexity of an erosion and sediment control plan will depend on the size of the activity and the known hazards within the area. It may be as basic as following standard operating procedures or as complex as incorporating an overlay on a crossing design. A plan prepared before right-of-way felling may need to be modified if felling shows previously unknown erosion concerns. Where general arrangements are already produced for a site, the erosion and sediment control plan can be shown as an overlay. In the example shown, erosion and sediment control techniques will be implemented along the fill slopes above the inlet and outlet of the culvert and along the four ditch lines entering the crossing location. These are typically six areas of concern at culvert crossings. 
straw mulch, reclamation seed mix, turned out ditches, sediment traps or basins, and riprap all incorporated into this plan. Section 2. Principles of Erosion Prevention Bare soil is easily eroded and should be managed to prevent its erosion. Key techniques are to keep the amount of exposed soil to a minimum, cover exposed soil soon after exposure, maintain existing ground cover where possible, and keep the ground surface rough rather than smooth. Bare soil requires a cover. During operations, plan to keep the amount of exposed soil to a minimum. Provide a cover as soon as possible. And note that the cover can be live vegetation or inert material like aggregate, logging debris, erosion control mats, straw, or other. The picture in the top left of the road construction shows a lot of exposed soil, which is a high hazard if heavy rains were to come. The picture below it, at the bottom left, shows a site where that hazard has been reduced through establishment of vegetation. Maintain existing ground cover. Ground cover provides protection against erosion, and where existing cover does not need to be removed during operations, it should be left intact. The picture in the top right shows streamside vegetation being protected and left intact which provides a filtering function for any sediment-laden water migrating towards the stream. Maintaining existing ground cover is a very cost-effective method of erosion control. Rough and irregular surfaces will slow overland flow and reduce the forces of sheet flow. Non-merchantable stems can be placed against the surface to provide a terracing effect to help hold soil behind the stems. Organic material and logging debris can be spread to provide cover and roughness. Looking at the general trend for erosion potential by site attributes, if we target soil texture, it's the fine textured soils that will have the higher erosion potential as compared to the coarse textured. Taking a look at slope or gradient, the steep and continuous sites will have the higher potential compared to shallow and gentle. Area of exposed soil, those with larger disturbances will have a higher potential as compared to those sites that have minimized the disturbance and provided cover. Considering operations, it's the ongoing operations and those with heavy haul along the road network that will have the higher erosion potential compared to sites where operations have been completed or there's light truck use along the road network. In summary, We've touched on the types of erosion and their importance, the need to understand and know what type of soil texture classes you have at your site, the importance of having a plan and communicating that erosion and sediment control plan, the importance of minimizing the exposed soil by amount and time and, and provide cover soon after exposure, and keeping the surface rough and irregular as compared to smooth as well as the erosion potential by site attributes. And we've tied this all together knowing that water management is at the core of erosion control. Resources available. The FP Innovations Guide, Erosion and Sediment Control Practices for Forest Roads and Stream Crossings, a practical operations guide, is available from FP Innovations as Advantage Volume 9, Number 5. The guide provides detailed description of the principles and practices of erosion prevention and sediment containment. It also provides best management practices by road prism attributes, such as the road surface, cut and fill slopes, or bridges and culvert crossings. Additional videos will also be developed. Thank you for your time today.